grace and peace to you this Monday morning. The last day of the month, July has gone by quickly, though very hot, but still quickly. Um, a lot happened in July, and that's good. Um, but we continue to move forward into August in hopes that uh, things continue to improve and ministry continues to move forward. So let us move on with morning devotions this Monday morning, the 31st of July. We begin where we always begin. At Facebook, in Facebook, with Steve Charleston, who has the beginning or entry words for uh, us this morning. He is the author of Spirit Wheel, Meditations from an Indigenous Leader. And Stephen writes, we are all storytellers. In fact, one of the most important roles we play in partnership with the Spirit, when we tell others who we are, where we come from, and what happened to us, when we tell them what we've seen, experienced, learned, we are giving them we are giving them, especially the young, a context to understand and cope with what is happening today. We give them clues that may solve many puzzles. Okay. From Oklahoma, we move to New Mexico to the Center for Action and Contemplation. And this uh, week's uh, topic is Healing Our Violence. This morning's title is A Loving Inner Witness. Father Richard continues to explain how contemplation heals us from the judgments and thoughts that so often lead to violence against ourselves and others. We each carry a certain amount of pain from our very birth. If that pain is not healed and transformed, it actually increases as we grow older and we transmit it to people around us. We can become violent in our attitudes, gestures, words, and actions. We must nip this process in the bud by acknowledging and owning our own pain rather than projecting it elsewhere. For myself, I can't pretend to be loving when I'm in when inside I'm not. When I know I have had cruel, judgmental, and harsh thoughts about others. At the moment the thought arises, I have to catch myself and hand over the annoyance or anger to God. Contemplative practice helps me to develop this capacity to watch myself and let go of the thought and to connect with my inner loving inner witness. Let me explain why this is so effective and so important. If we can simply observe the negative pattern in ourselves, we have already begun to separate from it. The watcher is now over here. The watcher is now over here, observing ourselves thinking that thought over there. Unless we can become the watcher, we almost always identify with our feelings and our judgments. They feel like real and objective truth. Most people I know are overly identified with their own thoughts and feelings. They don't really have feelings. Their feelings have them. And that may be what early Christians meant by being possessed by a demon. That's why so many of Jesus' miracles are the exorcism of devils. Most of us don't take that literally anymore, but the devil is still a powerful metaphor and it demands that we take it quite seriously. Everyone has a few devils. I know I'm possessed at least once or twice a day, even if just for a few minutes. There are all kinds of demons. In other words, there are lots of times when we cannot think a certain way. When we see certain people, we get afraid. When we see other people, we get angry. For example, numerous studies show that many white Americans have an implicit, unacknowledged fear of black men. 
Most of us are not consciously or explicitly racist, but many of us have an implicit and totally denied racial bias. This is why all healing and prayer must descend into the unconscious, where the lies we believe are hidden in our wounds and embedded in the social reality of our cultures. During contemplation, forgotten pain, painful experiences may arise. In such cases, it helps to meet with a spiritual director or a therapist to process old wounds and trauma in healthy ways. Over a lifetime of practice, contemplation gradually helps us detach from who we think we are and rest in our authentic identity as love. At first, this may feel like a, like an identity transplant until we learn how to permanently rest in God. Laudable goal. We now go to St. Paul, Minnesota, to Luther Seminary, God Pause, a daily devotion brought to you by the alumni of that seminary. This is Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 and 5. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the people. See, you shall call a nation. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that you do not know shall run to you because, the, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Let us pray. Our devotion writer, excuse me, I jumped right there to let us pray. Uh, our devotion writer is Alan, Ho Alan Holtz, uh, retired, Moorhead, Minnesota. And Alan, Alan, I'm not sure how to say Alan or Alan, but let's just say Alan. Alan writes, come, come and be fed. These words are spoken to the Judeans who have been exiled from their homeland for almost 60 years. They were home now, but their needs were many, yet houses had to be rebuilt, wells dug, crops planted again. But there were still many worrisome questions about the future. Would they survive? Would crops grow? How long before another enemy attacked? Many of us experience those same feelings when the doctor says it's malignant. When our employer says the business is closing, when we watched a loved one slipping into the grip of dementia, when, when, when. To the Judeans and to each of us, God says, come to me, listen, I will make with you an everlasting covenant, a covenant of life, of forgiveness, of love, of God's presence with you always. Let us pray. God of the covenant, grant us your loving grace that we may live in the covenant promise you have given us. Amen. Well, I hope these words were helpful to you this morning. They were helpful to me. Remember, our task is to be a neighbor. Pray for each other. Tell each other our faith stories. And most importantly, to be a neighbor. Be a blessing to someone today. Amen.